is let's register your attendance. Grace's table, free meals today at 6 p.m. in the youth center. And there's a workshop, a worship workshop and feedback session at Thursday, January the 13th at 6.30 p.m. in the fellowship hall. Is there any other announcements? Just a little emphasis on that last one. It's really important that we have people there. It's again our third meeting with the people from the district. It'll be downstairs and we're going to talk well about what we talked about last time plus a lot about worship. So please join us 6 Thursday, Thursday evening, 6 Thursday, 6.30 Thursday evening. All right, let us bow for our opening prayer. Source of love and mercy, as we enter a new year in the life of the church, may our love for you be made known in our love for one another. Help us open our hearts to the possibilities that lie before us. Guide our footsteps into the glory of your ways that we may live as you created us to be. Beloved children, crowned with glory and honor, may our worship reflect the greatness of our calling and the honor of our heritage. Amen. I, uh, I don't know if it was wrote in a book and I haven't looked at it that way, but I had planned to sing a certain song and it's been changed to Beulah Land now. Oh, 
good to everybody though everybody I just wish that other people sometimes would see that and repent of their sins and come back to them let's all go to the call of worship now saying praises to the Lord saying of God's glory and strength God calls us over the waters and strengthens us for the journey saying praises to Christ saying of his healing love Christ loves us, renewing our spirits and nursing our wounds. Saying praises to the Spirit, saying of the Spirit's comfort and hope. The Spirit's presence brings truth, comfort, and hope. Thanks be to God. 
evening. the children please come forward for the children's moment. Whoa, ow, yes. Oh dear. Well, you know what? I have a poster here. Now we call Jesus, Jesus, right? But you know, there are Dozens of things we can call Jesus, letting 
him know that we love him. And so I started a poster, and I was hoping maybe you could come up with some more things. Here are things that we call Jesus. We call him the Alpha and Omega. That means the A to Z, meaning he's everything. And we call him our rock. Sometimes we call him the Good Shepherd. Um, Prince of Peace, that's Jesus. Emmanuel, that means God with us. The Word, he's God's Word. Of course, he's the Son of God. And we call him Lord. Can you think of anything Beloved. else? What? Beloved, Beloved yes. King of, kings, son of man. King of kings and Son of Man. Lord, Light yes. Of Light of the world. Thank you. you. This was like down under there. I couldn't see him. You like Lord, huh? Like Lord this. is a good one. Which one? Yeah. Son of man? I like the pink one. The pink one. It's Lord. Mm hmm Huh? Can you think of anything else we want to call Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. That's a good thing to call him. Yeah. Jesus and Jesus. Jesus and Jesus. Sometimes they call him Jesus bar Joseph, which means Jesus, son of Joseph, though he wasn't really. He was really the son of God. And um, I know there was one preacher, and this will turn heads, that called him my boyfriend. That kind of sits funny with me. I don't know about you. But, you know, we say beloved, and that's my favorite. So Jesus is everything we can think to call him. And you know what I've got for you? I've got some coloring pages, of course, with my cast. I may not be able to get them. You just color anything around here that you want, but this is some of the names of God in the shape of a Christmas tree, Christmas tree because Christmas, of course, is for Jesus, and a Christmas tree is for everlasting. So, Savior, right. Oh, did we not have that on here? We need to put that on here. Savior. Kind of like what? Mm -hmm. um, I got to keep these because I use them for something else. But I think you have, if you got a bag, you have some colors. So you can color the on those. There you go. All right, let's say a prayer. Jesus, no matter what we call you, you know we love you. You are God's beloved son. And you are our beloved Lord. Please be with us and guard these children day by day and moment by moment. In your sweet name we pray. Amen. We're going to do a new song now. It should be on the screen here in a moment. Most radiant God, beloved Son, cherished Spirit, we come before you today in love and in praise. You are high above us, and yet you welcome us with open arms. We are lowly sinners, and we keep right on sinning, but you are quick to forgive. Make us truly contrite, dear Lord, as we return to you. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful world that you've made. Thank you in all circumstances. Thank you for the cold and the snow and the ice, and thank you for the sunshine and warm days. We are yours, Lord. Let us be thankful in all things. Lord, we raise to you as always the poor and those who are victims of oppression and violence. We raise up our nation and her leaders. May they bow humbly before you 
and acknowledge that yours are the power and the glory. We raise up your church that it may continue to be a force for good and for the sharing of your gospel. We raise up our individual families and all our church family. Bring them health, hope, and comfort as we all go through our days. We raise to you all those on our continuing prayer list and especially the shut-ins and those unable to be with us this morning. Bless those who are suffering from or guarding against the coronavirus. Make us wise when facing this horrible opponent. Give us compassion. We raise to you all the children of the world that you may nurture and protect them where we have failed. May they grow up in safety and in love. All these things we pray in Jesus' name, along with all of these unspoken needs of our hearts. Now we join in these words that our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, your love for Jesus is not measured by how much you give. Still, if you do love him, and I know you do, you will want to give something. So let's give with deep joy today to our beloved Savior. Will the ushers please come forward to receive God's tithe and our offerings? Father, we give with great joy. We give to the mission of your church so that we may make disciples for Jesus Christ and bring our world to the kingdom of heaven. Please help us on this mission and bless this money. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Please remain standing and we're going to sing Lily of the Valley.
This morning is in Luke 3, chapter 15 to 17, and then 21 to 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His willowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved, and you I am well pleased. You may be seated. The baptism John performed was not quite the same thing we experience today. I'm not talking about whether it was by immersion, pouring, or sprinkling. None of the scriptures actually tells us. We just know Jesus waded into the Jordan and was baptized. But John's baptism was for repentance and forgiveness of sins. Perhaps, if he said anything, John's liturgy was something like, repent and be made clean. That's why it really threw him for a minute, according to Matthew, when Jesus came down to be baptized, he said, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus didn't contradict him, but said, Let it be so for now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. How can someone repent who has nothing to repent of? How can someone be cleansed of their sins who is already without sin? Jesus wanted to be baptized not because it was needed, but because it was proper. It bestowed on him in a way the authority to baptize others. And as we know, he would baptize with the Holy Spirit and with the fire of his words. When we're baptized, we're baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and we receive the Holy Spirit. That's a far different thing and a far greater thing than what John did. When Paul first went to Ephesus, he found some disciples there, and he asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them. We receive the Holy Spirit, too, and for a specific purpose. The baptizing pastor says, The Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. That's the purpose, to help each of us be a faithful disciple of Jesus. 
Today we celebrate not just Jesus' baptism, but ours as well. We may not have seen the heavens ripped open and a dove descending, but in our hearts we hear the same voice from above. You are my child now, adopted through Jesus, and you too are beloved. Do we need to be baptized to be God's child? I don't think we do. Certainly God loves each of us already. But through baptism, we're formally adopted into the family of God. You are my son. You are my daughter. You are beloved. Because of the water, baptism still carries the symbolism of cleansing from sin. And in the early church, that symbolism was emphasized more than it is today. When new Christians went down into the water, they were said to die to self and be born anew to God. They would shed their old clothing before going in and come up to be enveloped in a new white garment. That symbolism is still there. We do often dress babies in white for their baptism. But seriously, how much sin are we washing away in a six-month-old? That's why some people question our infant baptism. From our point of view, becoming a part of God's family at the earliest possible age outweighs other considerations. So I'm asking you to shift your understanding just a tiny bit. We don't typically rebaptize, just as you don't repeat a formal adoption. That's not to say, though, that you should turn down a chance to be baptized in the Jordan River if it comes up. But technically, once is enough. Once is for always. Doing it again after you've fallen away, for example, doesn't change anything because the purpose of our baptism isn't just cleansing from sin. That was John's baptism. What we can do, and will do in just a few minutes, is remember our baptism and reaffirm our baptismal vows, which we do every time we baptize a baby or a new believer. But, but first, before we do that, I want us to think about that great voice from heaven for a few minutes. Jesus was not just beloved, he was the beloved. In the individual Gospels, it's not always clear whether everyone heard the voice or just Jesus, but it was clearly meant for him. It was a welcome, a reassuring voice that was certainly needed as Jesus began the path that would lead to his death. He wasn't just anyone. He was God's son, the beloved. Now he was on that path, and God was pleased. God would not abandon him. Who is Jesus to us? The beloved is more than an endearment. It's part of who Jesus is. Beloved to God, beloved to us. Love is part of his very nature. Love defines his relationship with God. Love defines his relationship with us. When we get caught up in ritual, it's easy to miss the love, but it's definitely there. When we say his name, we should think, beloved. You see, God doesn't just want us to behave. He wants us to love him. Jesus, too, wants our love. Not our fear, though it's always good to remember who we're dealing with. Not blind obedience. The scribes and Pharisees gave blind obedience to the letter of the law, and Jesus called them blind guides. No, we owe Jesus loving obedience. We aren't his servants anymore. We're his family. He trusts us to live in love and look at his commandments through the lens of love. 
Do you sometimes wonder how to address Jesus or God? Address them as someone that you loved beyond all reason. You hear me call God dearest Father and Jesus beloved Savior. Jesus is every beautiful thing we can think to call him. He is the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to our souls. Let us pray. Beloved, thank you for calling us into your family. Thank you for lifting us up for adoption as your sisters and brothers. Thank you for owning us and giving us the sign of baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us mindful of your love so that we feel it whenever we call your name. Make us worthy of our adoption. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, let's turn to page 50 in the hymnal for baptismal covenant number four and a renewal of our baptismal vows. For safety reasons, we are in the red zone for COVID. We're not going to come up and touch the water this year as we have done before. Instead, please use your focus on the water to acknowledge and remember your adoption into the family of God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. Acknowledge what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Amen. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father. Come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. 
Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit and by this gift of water, call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. To all of you, remember your baptism and be thankful. Let us rejoice in the faithfulness of our covenant God. We give thanks for all that God has already given us. As members of the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we will faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. And I think that calls for singing again. Let's sing the spirit song.
And now I'm going to send you out to remember your baptism and all that it means and to spread the love of Christ throughout the land. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding guide your hearts and minds in the love of Christ Jesus through the awesome power of the Holy Spirit until we meet again. Amen.